In this lesson, we're going to look at a geometric sequence and we're going to be looking at the explicit formula. You do also get something called a recursive formula, but I'll do that in future lessons. So what is a geometric? Well, geometric is something like this, 5, 10, 20, 40, or it could even be 100, 50, 25. So let's see what's happening. What's happening is that you're multiplying by two. So you're multiplying by the same amount. Now here, you're multiplying by a half. You might be saying, Kevin, aren't we dividing by two? Yes, that's the same as multiplying by a half. So you might be like, well, why didn't we just say dividing by two, bro? Why are you making this so complicated? Who says timesing by a half? The reason I'm saying timesing by a half is because when we are looking at geometric sequences, you want to look at how much you're multiplying with. You don't want to look at how much you are dividing with when using the formula. Okay, so geometric is when you multiply by the same amount. So the formula that you use for that one goes like this. So A, well, we've looked at some of these before. Um, A1 is your first term. R is the ratio. That's the number that you're multiplying with each time. N is the position. Remember, I showed you that with arithmetic. And then AN is the value. Okay, so if, for example, we looked at uh, this one over here, then let's say we looked at this 25. So if I quickly write the formula, then the AN is the 25, A1 is term one, which is 100, R is the amount that we are multiplying, which was a half, and then this is, the N here is position number three, because that's position one, position two, position three. So you'd say three minus one. Let's say, for example, I rather wanted us to look at, okay, let's take all that away. Let's rather look at this part. So if we look at the formula, then AN is the value, which is 10. A1 is the term one, which is five. R is two. And then this would be position two, because that's position one. This is position two. So you'd say two minus one. Okay, let's go do some examples. So here's our first example. It's definitely geometric because we're multiplying by two each time. So we'll use the geometric formula, which goes like that. And so to find the explicit formula, you're just gonna fill in whatever you can. So A1 is three, R is two, N minus one. Don't multiply these two together and make it a six. A lot of learners do that, but it's not correct because this N minus one is attached to the two, so you cannot just multiply these two together. Okay, so question B says determine term 20. So you gotta know if the 20 goes there or if the 20 goes there. So remember that if I give you something like three, um, nine, 27, 81, then if I use this formula, if I use the 27, then the 27 goes there but what position is that? That is term one, two, three. So the three goes there. So they're not saying that the value is 20, they're saying it's position, or they're saying that it's term 20. So this 20 is gonna be the N, okay? So we could say, um, A, let me just write this down again. So we could say that term 20 is gonna be to the power of 20 minus one. Now this is gonna be quite a big number, but don't worry, it's normally like that with geometric. Yeah, 1,572,000. Um, eight, um, then the last question, which is question C, which term has a value of 6144? So we'll come back to this formula and we'll put the value as 6144. And so now we can divide both sides. So, okay, well, let me explain this a little bit slower. So you wanna try to get this part by itself. So we'll divide both sides by three to get rid of that three over there. So that's gonna give us 2048 equals to two to the power of n minus one. Now what you wanna do is you wanna break this number. You, you could use logs if you're comfortable with logs, but you could rather just break this number down. So let's test some values. You could say two to the power of eight on your calculator. What does that give you? Ah, uh, 256. Okay, so it's not that one. Maybe it's two to the power of 10. Let's type that on your calculator. And that's 1,024. Let's say two to the 11, and that'll be 2,048. So we can rewrite this as two to the 11. 
Now, if you've watched my videos on exponential equations, then when we got these two numbers to be the same, we can cancel them out. And so we are just left with 11 equals to n minus 1. And so if you had to solve for n, you would find out that n is 12. Here's the next one. So this is definitely geometric because we're multiplying by a half each time. So the formula would be a1 multiplied by r to the n minus 1. And so the general formula would be a1 is 100, r is a half. I know we're dividing by 2, but you're not going to say dividing by 2 there. And then n minus 1. There's your formula. So for question b, it says determine term number 15. So that would be, you fill in 15 in the place of the n, and so that would be 100 to the half, or times a half to the power of 14. And if we had to go work this all out, you end up with 25 over 496. Here's our last question. So here they give us the formula. Remember that these two cannot be multiplied because of the n minus 1. So here they ask for term 12. So you're literally just going to go put a 12 over there. So term 12 would be like that. And if you had to go work this out, you're going to get 6144. Now it says which term has a value of 393216. So you can say 393216 equals to 3 times 2 to the n minus 1 because now they're giving us the value so that goes there and so what you would do now is divide both sides by 3 and that's going to give you 131072 then you need to try break this number down so let's start with 2 to the 13 so go 2 to the power of 13 on your calculator okay that's too small try 2 to the 16 let's try 2 to the 16 that's 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. Let's go 2 to the 17. If you say 2 to the 17, ah, there we go, 1, 3, 1, 0, 7, 2. So this can be written as 2 to the 17. Now those two numbers are both the same, so you can ignore them, and then you end up with n minus 1 is equal to 17. If you solve for n, it would be 18.